Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 18 of building the real working Iron Man exosuit. We're actually on Mark 2. I built a previous version I could just about hobble along in with a working arm, and now we're setting out to refine that design. Last time I looked at pressure pads so I can sense my movements. Most of this is in the prototype stage, and I'm taking very carefully to make sure I do it right this time. But this time we're going to look at motors and gearboxes. So the previous suit we used blocks and tackles, and we had loads of 3D printed pulleys, and we had this cord that pulled around, and that meant I spread the load over multiple weaker parts so all of the gearbox could be 3D printed we didn't put that load directly on any of the output teeth on the gears but for this time I've decided I can probably make something more compact out of these ball screws which I got on eBay so these have got to block each end with a bearing in and that supports the screw and then we've got this thing that travels up and down so obviously we'll turn the screw and that will cause um, a linear motion here and that linear motion is going to be coupled across the joint to move those feet and to move the hips, basically. So we either need a gear on here or somewhere else, and we need to mount this somehow on the suit. So what I'm going to do is 3D print all the parts to prototype them in plastic, and then if any of them need to be stronger, we're going to replace those with metal parts at some point in the future. So there's my first printed piece. It's a plate made with the Lulzbot Morstruder in PLA just to mount that, and that's bolted through. Eventually it'll probably need to be replaced with a piece of machined aluminium or a sheet of steel or something like that. But for now it'll get the sizing and we can check if the mechanism works, if we've got enough torque and speed and so on. And that is going to bolt on to one of the steel uprights and it fits in just there like so. Um, so then when this is driven up and down it's going to push a lever to the back of the leg there and that'll operate this joint and we'll do the same at the ankle for the other half of the leg. So now somehow I need to get a motor on to drive this screw up and down. So to make it as compact as possible, this time I've decided to have a look at some worm gears and we're going to prototype those with 3D printing and see how they hold up in terms of speed and torque. So um, I've got two different sizes here. Uh, this is the one I'm actually going to go with because it's got much chunkier teeth. The other one is pretty small. Both of these are 50 mil in diameter. Uh, this one is 30 teeth. The other one is 60 teeth. And basically I scaled up the smaller one to make it the same size and scaled up the worm gear as well. So uh, for now we've got captive nuts just so I can grip them on. Eventually I suspect they'll need to be printed in nylon or something or perhaps metal gears but for now we're going to print them in PLA and see how it goes and the CAD for those gears came from KHK stock gears where they actually sell gears but you can put the part number in here and generate CAD in a variety of formats which you can just download and integrate into your own projects And here they are. So I've got my worm gear there and the other gear there. They've both got grub screws in, which um, fixes them to the shaft. This worm gear is pretty long though, so if I put it on here, I probably need a support on the other end um, eventually to actually hold that and stop it wobbling on the motor. But that should work pretty well. I think the teeth are big enough, although these gears are PLA and this motor's really fast, which probably means the gears are going to melt when I test it, but at least we can work out how fast the linear motion goes. You can see they're a bit worn already from me testing before I filmed this. So I've just stuck a white piece of plastic under there to stop this thing spinning round. So now we can see that this will go up and down when I um, operate the gear. And I'm using just a normal RC handset to control the motor for now. I'm not sure how I'm going to hold this together. Obviously I haven't got any brackets or anything. But we'll see how that goes. So I think that needs to go that side in fact. So that's the way the thread goes. So not particularly sure about that approach, I don't really like the speed that this has to go to get that lead screw to move at the right speed, as it is it's not really even fast enough. Now this is a brushless in-runner motor which does a maximum speed of 22,000 RPM. In the very first episode of the exosuit we looked at why we were using these motors. Now um, in quadcopters you generally have outrunners which go slower, uh, probably up to 10 times or 20 times slower with more torque, but they're not very good at starting up. Now the in-runner is the sort of motor you'd have in a radio control car with lots of gearing, so when this motor's going fast, the car is going slow, you get better acceleration, better torque at that point, and better control. And that's why I selected these motors to use in the exosuit, and I built all those gearboxes. However, I've done quite a lot of projects with skateboards since, and for those I've been actually just using outrunners with a proper electronic speed control on the back wheel with a belt. 
and that's enough to push me along, as long as you do actually select the right type of speed control that has high current starting. So I think in the interests of basically getting this done and making it compact, instead of using these in-runner motors with lots of gearing, we're just going to get out runners and put them straight on that lead screw with a belt. So I've just hijacked the back end of the LEGO electric skateboard. The sound you can hear is the fan running in the ESC. So just precariously balance my ball screw up here. I've got a T5 pulley now on the end, and that's going straight on the motor. And the motor is a 280 kV brushless outrunner. And that's what powers me along. The speed control is actually one from a radio control car, so it's not great at startup. And it also has braking on, which isn't ideal for robotics. Uh, basically, it'll brake before it goes into reverse. But um, I've just got my trigger here and um, in fact, we can see that runs pretty well. Um, so flat out, it goes at that sort of speed, which uh, makes me feel much more comfortable. Whoops. So there we go. And if I try and grab hold of this now, there's just no way I can hold that. It's extremely strong. So we could go for a bigger motor and we could go for a better ESC. Uh, but that looks like a really good solution to get the kind of speed we need. So this is the more recent Iron Man skateboard, and this one has the VESC ESC on it. It's a turning G clone of the VESC open source ESC. And this one's really meant for skateboards, so it's much better at starting up. However, as far as I was concerned, it didn't have reverse on, because on the Hobby King website it said reverse, no. However, if you tick a button in the configuration utility for reverse, and there's various options, then in fact it will go in reverse and it will do that without braking. It also has PID controlled speed, measuring the speed of the motor from the back EMF, and all sorts of clever features that'll be really useful in robotics. So having made those changes in the config, we can now see the motor does in fact uh, go in both directions with no problem at all. And it's still got braking and things like that, so it should be uh, quite good for quite accurate control, in fact. So using a combination of those brushless motors and the VESC ESC, which also has some other interfaces, including UART Serial, CAN Bus, i squared c and various other things, we should be able to actually uh, make quite a good robotic motor controller. And those motors are about the same power. This is one kilowatt, and so is that little outrunner, and you can get more torquey, slower motors even bigger outrunners that's still only about a kilowatt as well, but obviously you sacrifice speed when you get more torque, so that's going to work out pretty well. So I've now made a pair of these, uh, which you can see here. I've only got the T5 pulley on one of these. These plates will need to change when I eventually mount the motor on here, when I decide what motor it is and um, exactly how it's going to be mounted, and these may be made of metal as well as I say. But for now we've got a pivot point on here, which travels up and down as the ball screw turns, and that's the piece that's going to push off and that's going to move the leg around. So this is mounted on my leg with the slider. Now what should happen is that this ball screw should really be pushing a slider on some rails so that the load isn't all on this ball screw because at the moment when I put my piece in that goes up to here, basically all of the load is pushing this ball screw which could bend it so there should be some rails and some extra sliders that actually take the load. I might build something into the steel that I've got here in the future but for now we're going to see if we've got enough speed and torque before we do too much design. So this is the next bit that pivots on those bearings and that will come up to the top to another point, so when this moves up and down, it moves the leg this way. I've made these pivot blocks to go at the other end of the arm there, so that will hinge in there, and I've got 8mm bearings on the internal diameter, so we're just going to put some 8mm bolts through. So I fitted these pieces in here with 3D printed pivots at each end. We've got the bearings on the outside and the bolt going through the pivot point. So uh, now we can turn this and that will move the leg one way. And you saw how fast that went on the brushless motor. So obviously it's going to be quite agile. And of course going the other way, once the motors are fitted, we'll push the leg the other way. So now we've got these in here, the joints are pretty stiff, so this can kind of freestand, but we still need to sort out the hip joints. Of course, we've got the same arrangement at the ankle here. 
Before it can be totally freestanding and we can position those legs in the maximum stride length to see how that looks, we need to sort out all of this because it's still quite wobbly at the hips. So these are the next parts. These are some extremely chunky parts. They're about 40% infill with a more extruder and we've got aluminium extrusion that fits in them. So let's have a look at where those fit. So these fit on the back here and these are attached to the hips. So as the suit leans side to side, you can see these are moving and we had a similar arrangement on the Mark 1 suit. So now I can get both of these and bungee them each side so we can constrain that in the middle, but it can still move. So for now, we've put a load of bungee cord on that holds this in the middle quite nicely, but eventually that'll be replaced with springs when I've worked out what force I need. So for now, bungee's pretty disposable. We don't have to spend money on the wrong springs. When I get up and moving, we can see how this works out and then come and upgrade it later. Right, so I've removed the straps and uh, now it pretty much stands up by itself, which is really good. So quite happy with that really. Feels like I should be able to walk along in it. Plenty of places for sensing in the middle there. So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be all right. The whole thing's not too heavy still, so I can just basically pick this up and move it around, which is pretty good as well, better than the last one. And I'm pretty happy with the look of the legs we've got there and everything that I've put on. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be fine for testing. As I say, we need to replace these with runners on rails and probably make some pieces out of metal. But first, we'll get the motors fitted, work out where we can position them in relation to this pulley here. These pieces as well, they're not too great end to end because the nuts could slip up and down the 2020. When we know exactly what length they are, then we can make one solid piece that fits in there. Down on the lower leg here, we probably need to cut a piece out of the wood here to modify it to put the T5 pulley on here, but that's fine because this piece moves with the actuator. The lower leg is shorter, but I've still managed to get that same length ball screw in there. And for anyone who's super worried, this is the maximum stride length, which is pretty much heel to toe. So um, I think that's a pretty big step to take. In fact, my feet are much further apart than that because they're shorter than the feet on here. So I think that should be good enough for anything I need to do. And I'm probably gonna take smaller steps when we get going anyway. So it looks like those ball screws have enough reach. So that's the end of this video. Next time I'm gonna come back and actually put the motors in and we can modify those plates at a time. We're also gonna put some controllers in and also feedback pots. So we should be to position each joint. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also it's really important to say all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me, all my videos early and almost daily sneak peeks and pictures.